the K-pop blast is once again back on its normal schedule of twice a week. So with this first episode, we were talking about the seven first seven contestants of Unpretty Raps that have been revealed. Also a bunch of other stories as well. So let's get it started right now. What is going on everybody? My name is Nick from MWK Pop and I wanna welcome you back for another episode of the K-Pop Blast. Every single day that this comes out, of course, we are talking about the news. So the stories that we're gonna to cover today are the lineup that has been real, revealed for Unpretty Rap Star season number two. YG Entertainment is suing a news network or a news source that has or that published the drug scandal a few months ago and CL's U.S. debut may possibly be happening before the end of the year. That is very exciting. We're also going to talk about some brand new store, some brand new music. So well, let's get it started with the first story of the day. I'm not entirely sure if you follow. I certainly don't. But Unpretty Rap Star season number two, we've got seven out of the eleven total contestants that have been announced, and the lineup is creating quite a stir specifically over a single member. Now the lineup consists of Yubin from Wonder Girls, Hyorin from Sistar, Yezi from, from Fiesta, we've got rappers Kilmi, Ansu Min, Casper, and Kitty B. Now the lineup there is pretty much like you've got a couple people who were on Show Me The Money and didn't quite make it. You've got, of course, the three idol, idol rappers, and then you've got some other pretty, I mean, at least Gilme, I know, is a pretty decently well-known independent, sol well, not independent, but solo rapper. So the lineup there is pretty, you know, full of people who are relatively well-known. And the big question that I see everybody asking around here is, why is Hyolin included in this lineup here? And the, the answer that I can give you is, I don't know. I, I don't know why she's there. Honestly, I don't know why Yubin is there either because she doesn't need to be, I don't think. You know, and it really, the main question that I, that I get out of this, and it's also a question that, that I ask of Show Me The Money as well, because as far as I know, these, these two shows are supposed to be shows where, you know, lesser known rappers, whether they're solo or in a group, in, a, in an idol group, you know, face off to show people what they have got, what their skills are, and raise their profile a little bit. And the fact that you're including members of Sistar, who is a really, 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 really established girl group, doesn't need any of that extra promotion, nothing like that. I'm, I'm curious why that is. Also, the fact that there's a member of Wonder Girls, you have a member of Wonder Girls, you're guaranteed ratings, you're guaranteed viewers. And since we're talking about viewers, basically the answer that I, the only answer that I could come up with of why these idol members have been included is because they're going to get the ratings. And that's the, that's the sad story of, you know, basically running a show on TV is that if you don't have the ratings, you cannot continue to keep airing it season after season. So if season one didn't get the, the ratings or the views, then season two would never happen. And so you need to have somebody, at least one person or two people or a bunch of people who are going to bring the views for season two so you can have a season three. And, you know, with that in, taken into consideration, the fact that I think that they're doing this for the views, that brings up another question of how exactly is that going to make the competition? Is it going to make it fair? Because the fact is that if you say that Hyolin loses a loses a head-to-head -head battle against somebody and, you know, you first off, you're going to piss off the fandom, which... Is we, as we know, entertainment companies and TV networks and stuff like that don't like to piss off the people that they're you know serving their their you know you know their their product to very much, and they're also going to lose those viewers, which is going to hit hurt the ratings, which means that the show may or may not continue for another season. So, you know, are they going to be a bit easy on the judging, or what is going to happen there? Also, if there is any fan voting, which I'm not entirely sure what the format is, but I do know that you know music shows and stuff like that, fan vote is a big deal. Uh, if you get somebody like Hyolin up against uh, Kill Me, the fan vote is going to be super, super, super lopsided, and the Sistar member is going to win that every single time that it happens. Ten times out of ten, 100%. 
Hyolin will beat Gilmy as far as fan voting is concerned. So who knows how exactly that goes, you know, and you know, the same questions and thoughts and stuff like that that I have about, you know, Unpretty Rap Star, I do also have about Show Me The Money because again, you have included to a much lesser extent, you know, uh, rappers from idol groups who are already well established as far as, you know, being in a group that is well known and popular. And then as well, you know, some pretty decently, some really high profile rappers as well. That's also a thing, but Show Me The Money definitely is a, you know, more open, I think, you know, venue to promote yourself as an independent rapper and to get yourself some attention. Whereas I think Unpretty Rap Star, if you look at what the confirmed lineup is and what the rumored lineup is, it is full. The majority of the rappers in there are idols. And that's a bit crazy to me. Whether or not they were, you know, under, they were a rapper, you know, underground or solo rapper before they joined the group or not is kind of irrelevant at this point, I think, although it does really play a big part, I think. But, you know, the fact that you have got members joining out of idol groups is a bit concerning to me. Now, you know, having Fiesta and, or, and other, you know, lesser known groups, members from lesser known groups join, I don't really have much of a problem with that because, you know, again, it's promotion and, you know, that's kind of what's getting on TV and stuff like that is seen as for these entertainment companies as a way to promote their groups. So that's that. Who knows exactly how this is gonna turn out. You know, it could end up being a fantastic thing. It could be awesome. But again, who knows? It could end up being a really bad thing, not only for uh, Hyolin, it could also be a bad thing for Sistar as well as a general, you know, as a thing that hurts as, you know, her performance or anything like that uh, hurts the reputation of the group in general, at least in the short term, because people are gonna forget and they're gonna return back to their previous status. So. There we go. Those are my thoughts and opinions on the so the uh, revealed lineup of Unpretty Rap Star Season 2. I want to know what you had to say because, of course, this is a thing that's raising a lot of questions. What are your thoughts and opinions? Put them down in the comment box below. I really want to hear them. So we're moving on to the next story. YG Entertainment is suing the news company for creating a scandal earlier in the year. So let's talk about that right now. I don't know if you guys remember, but earlier in the year, there was a drug scandal that broke out that was basically revealed that staff of an entertainment company was, I think it was caught in Incheon Airport, and I think that the drug that they were using, that they were using um, with themselves and, and other you know, well-known idols, I believe it was cocaine, I'm not entirely sure, but it definitely was a hard drug. And the news report that broke that story, really, I think that you, I do, I don't, didn't specifically see it, but I do think that they ended up using a picture of G Dragon blurred out his face. So of course, he wasn't like easily identifiable, but he was that instantly was like, whoa, G Dragon is in on this and he is associated with it. And of course, a lot of people were like, that's definitely not true it cannot possibly although it could kind of possibly be a fit to g-dragon stage personality but we're not really going to talk about that too much but turns out of course that, that is false and yg entertainment is suing the news agency that revealed that broke that story and heavily implied that g-dragon was involved uh, falsely at that he was not involved in any way and they're suing for damages of uh, the, the, the two numbers that I've seen are 100 million to 200 million won which is about 100 to 200 thousand dollars which it's a lot of money I think but you know I don't know exactly how much this news agency has but I do know that I do hope that they enjoyed all of the income and you know attention that this story generated for them over the at the beginning of the year and as that continued on through time because they were about to lose a lot of that through financial losses right there to YG Entertainment, I do believe. Uh, but who knows exactly how that's gonna turn out, but you know, it's always, I guess, nice to see when people start, you know, dragging their, you know, idols' names through the mud and trying to bring them down, that the company fights back because of course, one of the things that, I, that we see oftentimes is, you know, fans, you can't really sue fans, but you know, you have a lot of news agencies and stuff like that. Um, all around the world who report, you know, all of the, the trash, the garbage journalism, the tabloid journalism that drags all these people's names through the mud trying to, you know, create a sensational thing to get the views and the clicks and stuff like that. And, you know, whether or not it's damaging, this one in particular was, could have possibly been really, really damaging to the biggest promotions in K-pop that Big Bang are carrying out at this point in time. So, 
you know, it's really awesome to see that YG is saying like, hey, um, I know that the general thing is to like say like, oh, well, to chastise that person and then also apologize for whatever the thing is that caused the outrage or the story. But we're not actually going to do that this time because definitely you were wrong and we're, we, we want something from this because you put our promotion, our Big Bang promotions at serious risk by, you know, implicating G-Dragon in this huge, huge, huge scandal. It would have been a career ender depending on, you know, how the, how legal proceedings went after that, uh, considering, you know, seeing it because like seriously hard drugs in Korea that is some pretty serious business so there you go YG standing up for his artist I really liked seeing that now we're going on some more YG related news to CL in the US what is that what is going on with that because no progress has been made thus far but maybe there is a bit to do so let's talk about it CL, uh, as you know, has been hyped up to have a US release in 2015, and thus far, the only thing that she has released is Dr. Pepper, which, to uh, unsurprisingly, I guess you can say, has not been met with much, you know, appreciation and enthusiasm by K pop fans. Uh, one, because it's something definitely completely different, is not aimed at them specifically. So, me, and a lot of other people didn't really like it that much. Not to mention that I just think in general it's not a very good song, but that's just my personal opinion. The trap music doesn't, you know, is not my thing. My brother likes it. He, he, he thought it was pretty enjoyable. I don't think he thought it was that great, but he did kind of like it. But CL has been listed on Billboard's top 10 new artists that you need to pay attention to. And that is awesome. In that interview or the article, the little snippet from that, it's been revealed that she's going to be releasing an EP I think, I don't remember specifically which month it is, but later in the year, of course, we've only got like five months left, but probably in the, in the final quarter of the year under Mad Decent, which has got everybody scared. The main comment that I've been seeing about that is that uh, because it's a, a, a record being released under the label Mad Decent, which is the label that put out Dr. Pepper, that it's going to be another kind of trap sort of song not quite a you know a song that requires much talent to perform but we do have a quote from cl specifically saying that you know she is a performer she doesn't like boxing herself into a corner doing one thing you know she likes to sing she likes to dance she likes to do all kinds of other things so that there is giving us a bit a bit of hope that maybe this song and you know mini e ep is gonna be a bit more you know I guess a, a better showcase of her talents as, you know, CL than Dr. Pepper was because Dr. Pepper really was basically just a song that was made for fun and they could sell it and people were going to buy it. So why not do it? So that's really exciting. CL after basically a year of playing around with, you know, Skrillex and Diplo and going on tour with them featuring on a bunch of their live stages as they, you know, played festivals and stuff like that. It's really awesome that she's getting down to see that she's finally getting down to business and they may or may not be actually working on a song. Or they, they are working on a song. But whether or not she's going to have an actual real release that comes out in 2015, it's probably not going to happen. It could possibly happen in 2016, which, uh, you know, YG time, that's the way it goes, right? So the final thing we're talking about, we got some new releases one of which I'm super, super excited to hear about. So let's tell you, so I'm gonna tell you what those are. It is time to wrap up this episode of the K-Pop Blast. And I think that every single time that we do this, we're gonna end with some brand new release rumors or confirmed dates. First up, we've got 4 Minute, who has been revealed that they're going to be making a comeback in September or October, which is in the next two months. Immediately following Hyuna's promotions for her solo album A+. And oh my god, I'm excited for this. This is gonna be really, really awesome. I don't see how, I don't really know exactly what they're, how they're, how they're gonna top crazy. But they can definitely match it. And I'm really, really pumped for that. No idea what that's gonna be. Of course, we don't have any official announcement from Cube. No official information. So I'm just gonna chalk this one. I'm just gonna put this in the rumor column, even though it seems to be everyone's talking about it as if it's actually going to happen. Second up, we've got a rookie girl group called Unicorn, which is gonna be coming out of, which is it? Show Brothers Entertainment. They're gonna start their promotions on a you know web drama mini series sort of thing called we are a girl group which is going to be basically the beginning of their official promotion activities which is supposed to be kind of like a dramatic insight into their lives as girl group members which is interesting i like that idea 
And of course, it may or may not be 100%, it probably isn't gonna be 100% true, but it will be, I think, a decent insight into, you know, the way that the idols live just a little bit, even if it is heavily ed edited to make it entertaining and, you know, less, you know, grim and, you know, that all to, to show the good side of it, not the bad side, but, you know, you can be expecting them, though, to be making their actual comeback. The song is going to be released on September 3rd, so that's not too long ago. Too long away. You get two, three weeks until that one happens, so look forward to that. Also, we got Super Junior. Could they possibly be gearing up for a repackage album? All we've got is one picture of them dressed up and looking like they're filming a music video somewhere. And of course, that's not real evidence of anything happening. But seeing as how uh, they, you know, every SM artist that's released a song this year has had a repackage album that they've released, it's very, very likely that Super Junior actually has Super Junior even had. They've all oh, they've already had a repackage. They, Devil was their repackage album. Are they about to have another one? Or are they going to have a new release? Who knows? But it seems likely based off of that single photo, and the evidence is pointing towards a new Super Junior release coming out. Soonish, maybe not this year, but de but next year is definitely going to be one. You can be sure of that. So there you go. Those are the brand. Those are the comeback rumors. I got four minutes. I'm excited for that. Of course, I'm excited for that. Unicorn brand new girl group is always exciting, and Super Junior, considering the form that they have been in this year, and they've just been killing it. SM artist minus Girls Generation have been throwing down and putting out the best music that they have of their entire career. I'm excited for some Super Junior as well. So that's the final story. We're going to close it out in just a second. All right, guys. Unfortunately, that is the end. That is all of the news that I have got to talk or that I want to talk about. So I want to know, what did you think of all of what? If you had any opinions on any of these stories, put them down in the comment box below. I really want to hear what you had to say. Also, get connected with me on social media. Check the links down in the description box below and follow me on every single social media platform that you possibly can. I would really, really appreciate it. Also, you can help me reach the heights and goals that I want for my YouTube channel. Check out my Patreon page, become a patron. Also, you can help me out a little bit through fan funding on YouTube. I would really appreciate it. The link to my Patreon is gonna be down in the, in the description. Click that, check it out. Find out all the information that you wanna know about what I wanna do, where I'm going, and how you're gonna help so I would really, really appreciate if you would do that as well. So that is going to be it for this video. As always, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.